Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Carr Report wherever you get your podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media, A-M-P-I-R-E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. Don't forget, you can read my work on ESPN.com. I have a story up now about Jaden Daniels, the injury. I'll get to that in a minute as we wrap up the Commander's 40-7 to win over the Carolina Panthers. Also, programming notes, Tuesday night, 7.30 Eastern time with Bram Weinstein, the voice of the commanders in our live stream. I will also have a, some sort of a game review or just kind of going over a few plays on for that'll come out Tuesday morning. So join me for all that stuff. And again, Bram and I, 7.30 Eastern time, Tuesday, good chance to interact with us, ask some questions, make some comments to get out there and just talk about a five and two team. Now, Carolina is not a good team. We know that. However, what this team showed, once again, it's another bad team that they played that they completely dismantled, and they did it early. That's a mark of a good team. So you can poo-poo or dismiss, and some people did. I think most of you guys have are pretty wise about this. You can dismiss them if you want to say, well, Carolina, you know, the Carolina's like, Carolina has a decent offense and has had a decent offense, a good offense, with Andy Dalton, the quarterback. They did nothing today. They are a bad defense, and the and the commanders tore them apart. That's what they should do. So that's two bad teams in a row they played at home. They beat the Browns by 21. They beat the Panthers by 33. That's the third win by more than 20 points this season. But let's get to Jaden Daniels. We'll get more into the game in a minute. So the update is... As Dan Quinn said after the game, there really is no update yet. He's going to get more tests on Monday to to go over to see what the extent of the rib injury is. Now, what you kind of gather after the game, um, watching Daniels come off the field, he go he went up and gave Bryce Young a hug. He gave owner Josh Harris a hug, a nice embrace. So you're not doing things like that if it's just you're in this excruciating pain. You're not on the sidelines if it's a really bad injury. And that's where he was in the second half, was on the sidelines in a street close. That is, and, you know, he was participating. He's, he was close to the to the field. So it's not like they were shielding him away from danger, et cetera. He, by all accounts, talking to teammates, as Marcus Mariota said, he was in good spirits on the sidelines. Guy, you could see him talking and smiling to guys. And as he left the field for good, you could see him kind of, you know, kind of waving to the crowd, kind of gesturing with both arms up. So, there were a lot of good signs. And what you heard is that he was that, you know, you hear the phrase, he's okay. Now, what does that mean? Nobody really knows yet. So I think it's, it's hard to say what, what his status is at all for next week against Chicago. Cause we don't know, as Dan Quinn said, they'll get to get the test on Monday. Then he'll update us on Monday. It's three 30 conference call with Dan Quinn. That's when we'll have more information on Jaden Daniels. But I think there are a lot of positive signs for him that if nothing else, it's not anything long-term for sure. And so um, now, I, you know, could he have gone back in today? Can't say that. I would not say that when I watched him warm up after the injury, when he tried to go out in the second series, you could see him grimace in pain. He threw his helmet down. So not, not I don't think it was just because it was a blowout that he didn't go back in the game. I think it was because he legitimately it was tough for him to throw and you have a guy that can go in and play. So, but again, we don't know yet what it means uh, for, for um, this situation. And, you know, you, again, you talk about being in good spirits. Well, that's kind of his natural personality, but I think it, I think when you're hurting like this, it's hard to always have that. And he, and he certainly was showing that on the sidelines. He was smiling. He was engaged. You could see him at times talking to Sam Hartman as they, you know, where there's on, you know, just whispering things to him and looking on the headset or whatever. He wasn't on the headset, but Hartman or somebody else was, and he was engaged with that. So he was into the game. Those are all good signs. And his mom even tweeted that he tweeted that he's fine. So all those are good things for him, but we won't know more until Monday. We get our first um, update from Dan Quinn. And then throughout the week, I would expect this to kind of linger just because it's a rib injury and rib injuries can be painful. Dorrance Armstrong found that out and he missed Sunday with the rib injury, something he hadn't had before. And I kind of knew on Thursday, 
figured on Thursday for sure that he would miss this game. The question is, would he miss another one? And we don't know about him. But the point is, that's that's. I don't know that it's a direct comparison. You just know that rib injuries are very uncomfortable. And then it's, it depends on the severity of it, of course. And that's what we'll find out more on Monday. So, and I know... Some people are going to get worried that, you know, here's another quarterback that got hurt, but it's, again, it's not bad. So at least that's the initial, the initial thought from a number of people. So wait, you know, I last, well, that's the initial thought. And so let's just keep it at that. But um, I think injuries happen in this game. And yes, it, the question is, when did it happen? It, to me, it looked like it happened on that first play, the 46 yard run at the end of it, you could see him kind of, turning to engage with the defensive back, closing in on him. There's a linebacker got him. Looked like maybe he caught a knee to the rib at the end of that run. Because then on the next play, you see, after a handoff, you could see him kind of clutch that side. And then he had the awkward run and fall to the ground um, uh, later in the drive. And he carried one more time on that drive. And then after the drive, he came out and he was, that's when you could see him in some pain being checked out. And, and then went to the medical tent, and that's when he went to try and warm up. One, one warm-up toss, grimaced, done, helmet off, boom. But I think one thing that Dan Quinn said is that he liked, for whatever it's worth, he liked the communication between the trainers, the doctors, and the staff. And that it was an easy decision to not have him go back in. I think we we all know um, what how that can work in opposite ways. Um, and so it was handled well. He seems to be doing well. He was on the sidelines of good spirits. So things look positive for him. But again, we still don't know what that means for Chicago or anything else um, beyond that until we get more information. So I think one of the things that this does highlight is a number of things. One, again, Carolina's defense isn't very good, but they're not good at all. And they were missing guys, but this offense did exactly what it should. And they did it with a backup quarterback. Now, you can say that, you know, Marcus Mariota did not look great in the preseason. He is a professional quarterback. He does have 74 starts. He does have a lot of experience. So he was able to go in and he did not look sharp early. And then he caught a rhythm. And that's when you know, okay, he's he's going to start going. And against that defense, he started picking them apart. I think it speaks highly of him and it speaks highly of Cliff Kingsbury. I'll get to him in a minute. And the entire staff, because this comes down to preparation too. And this go, that's the quarterback's coach to beat a Pritchard, David Blaw, the assistant quarterback's coach, Cliff Kingsbury. You can look at all those guys in the offensive staff at what a good job they've done preparing this team for situ for situations and then situations like this. And when you hear, you know, you see how the team responded, like it could have been a deflating tone on the sidelines in the stadium we've seen that before not just with Robert but anything goes wrong and and how the team handles things like coming into this game they were coming off a tough loss in Baltimore we've seen this this franchise come off tough losses playing bad teams at home and then not doing well we saw it last year against Chicago now the Bears went on to have a better year but at that time they were not playing well and, and what did they do they this team laid a massive egg on a Thursday night game this time, instead they have all their alumni back here and they showed exactly what they were. And this is why I told you during the week, I wasn't worried about this team per se, because it's a very mature team. And again, I'll get to some of that in a minute, but let's talk about Mariota first and just how the, again, how this team responded, but they responded well because of how Mariota played too, because he, again, he missed on his first three passes and then he caught fire and it was that 92 yard drive right before halftime. That was a big key. And I, by the way, I'm going to talk about the defense in a minute because I, that was the most impressive part of this day. Um, but with Mariota, he, on that drive, he get you know, the 92 yard drive, he gets a seven yard completion, gets an 18 yard completion and he starts to get hot. And I think that's where you go. Okay. That's where the experience comes in, right? A guy can come in off the bench. He missed the first four games of the year. He was on IR because of the pec injury again, wasn't exactly great in the preseason or even in practice. He only had the one preseason game, but in practices, wasn't like he was just picking picking them apart. I mean, this it was ostensibly a competition with he and, and, and Jaden Daniels, but it really wasn't. It was just all Jaden. Is Jaden ready or not? Um, but it wasn't like Mariota was necessarily pushing him. In fact, I know some reporters are talking about, oh, man, should Jeff Driscoll be the number two quarterback? Well, Mariota showed today why he's valuable. And one thing that Zach Ertz said is that 
He said he played against Mariota in college, and this is more similar to the offense that Mariota ran in college than what he had been in in other places. And so he felt like it was a chance for him to really show more of what he could do. And that's why when they signed Mariota, it certainly was with the idea of playing that, that he would be a good fit in this, this style of offense rather than a guy like a Jacoby, Jacoby Brissett or anything like that because of the ability to use his legs. Anyways, we saw that a couple of times, especially on that 92-yard drive. 15-yard pass to McLaurin. Really, there's good pressure. They have five, five rushers, a little bit of stunt in the middle, steps up, keeps his eyes up. Hits McLaurin, just a good, confident throw over the middle. Has a 23-yard pass, another stunt, just a four-man rush, but a stunt, um, five-step drop, plant, straight to, to McLaurin over the linebacker, right in the, right inside the, the cornerback, another good, confident throw. And you could just see the you could see that momentum and the confidence picking up. And I don't know, you know, these guys all say they're confident, but you, you know, he hasn't, he hasn't been in a game. He played against the Browns, but it wasn't like he had played in a meaningful moment minutes for this team and have been a while period. So for him to go out and do that, you it's, you still have to get your rhythm. You still have to build up that and like, okay, Hey, now it's coming. And then on the 12 yard touchdown pass to Ertz, not, again, keeping the eyes up and he scrambles out to the right could have run the ball there. There was an opening there and he may have, he might have scored. I don't know. He certainly would have gotten inside the five. Keeps his eyes up. Ertz cutting across in the back. Just a good throw on the move. Good throw. Good catch by Ertz. And, and, and a nice job by Merido. That drive to me was a big key. There was there was no, listen, Carolina was done before that point, most likely. But you put it away, which is what you should do against teams that are bad. That's what they did. And that's what they, I mean, listen, folks. This is, again, the third win by 20 or more points. That says something. If they were eking out wins against bad teams, okay, well, maybe we've seen that here too. Like there have been seasons where like, okay, they got this win that's over this bad Rams team or whatever it was years ago that what does it really say? Well, you know, what this is saying is that they're handling business and that speaks to the maturity of the team. How they fare against good teams, yes, that matters. I still think they're building up to a certain point against the top, top teams. As we saw last week, there's a ways to, there's a, they still have a, some gap to, some ground to cover there, but they're doing what they should against teams that they should beat. And, and I, you know, I think, again, I give Mariota a lot of credit for how he played. And you can't, I can't overstate just the importance of just how he's handled his business. In practices during walkthroughs, he's by if Jaden Daniels doing it, he and Jeff Driscoll would be behind the group, just kind of going over the signals, doing all the things that they normally would do. And they don't you don't always see guys doing that, but that's what you know, it's a good quarterback room. And I think people wonder why they have Marriott around. Well, this is this is why, but it's also because of how he mentored Jaden Daniels, but also you know how a guy's gonna stay prepared. And I think that's that's certainly a very good thing. And it's so it says a lot about him. Listen, he and McLaurin connected for six passes. It was six catches, 98 yards from McLaurin, just a really good day. And that was all after Jaden Daniels left. Jaden only threw and completed two passes. But so he was getting the ball downfield and just, again, an overall nice job. Now, will this continue against the, if he had to play against the Bears? I don't know. And, but I think it was a good, a good job by him to do this against a, I don't, how, however bad they are, you still have to go do it. And it certainly beats the alternative, but it also can serve as a, if, if he has to go play next week, a good warm up for him to kind of get your rhythm and, and get a feel for it. And then you have to go do it again next week. And I think, you know, certainly you'd want Jaden Daniels out there. And I don't know what would happen if Mariota has to play against the bears, how well he do. But I do think this was a good building block for him and for others to see, Hey, this is what he can do. Again, bears are much better. So that would be a difference, but it was still a good showing by him. And I also think it speaks volumes about the coaching staff. I'll start with Cliff Kingsbury. You still, you see the ability to maintain the same offense that you wanted because he offers a lot, some of the same stuff that Jaden Daniels does. Not as good, but he has that ability to move that also, that very much helps with what Kingsbury wants to do. And you, with having Brian Robinson back, you're able to use more of your backs the way you want. The creative use of Eckler and and um, Jeremy McNichols, getting them in the backfield together at times. 
And just, I mean, there's some play actions off that. In fact, the run that Jaden had, the one that he got hurt, that I think he got hurt on, was just he had McNichols and Eckler in the backfield. And you have Eckler, basically, basically those two are split back through their crossing, fake to fake to McNichols, and then Eckler leads Daniels around right end. And even when he was doing that, you see people fooled by that play. The linebackers on the backside fooled by the action of the play. No, one eye, one set of eyes was on Daniels, and that's that's and and Eckler took care of the corner, and then it was just who is, is somebody going to catch him? So, but but I do think Kingsbury deserves a lot of credit, and I think one of the things is, and I I know like when he was in Arizona, um, you're in charge of the of the entire team. So I think there are times now. I was talking to Zach Ertz about this, and he kind of feels that. Um, after, you know, during the week now, you can spend way more time on the offense than you had when you were a head coach, because you had to worry about other things. You had to be focused on this, this, and being a, and being a play caller. It's now he's get, he gets the office about three or four. He's, he's, this is what he likes to do. And I think it just helps him. And it, it hurts that he looks like he looks really happy and having fun. But I also think it helps him to not have all the other stuff to worry about and just worry about offense. And then the other part is that I think they really like Jane Daniels. So like that goes into why he may look so happy in the group that he has. Um, but but I also I think it speaks to the preparation of the entire group. And you can again to Vita Pritchard, Dave Blaw, all those guys, Bob, Brian Johnson, you know, Anthony Lynn, the the entire group. So it's it's a Good. It's turning out to be a really good offensive coaching staff, which I thought it might, um, but maybe a little bit better than than you thought. And I think days like this show that. And again, now could they do this against Chicago? Well, again, the Bears are better, and we'll see next week. But I do, I think you have to give a tip of the cap to what they did in this game for sure, and what what um, what Mariota showed. The other part of it is too, and it's funny because they, these guys talk. Mariota said this is a unique group. And one of the more unique teams he's been, and I, a lot of guys have said this, and we t- we've talked about that. A lot of us have talked about just how close this group seems, and you see that. And I think it comes through in moments like this. Guy goes down, what happens? And De- you know, Deami Brown talks about the brotherhood. And I even asked him after he was done talking, said, what do you see? What do you see when you see that? What, what does that mean? And obviously some of that is like, you know, you, you, um, it's, it's the togetherness and they like to be around each other. And that's one of the things that Mariota said it, others have said it, how much fun they have just being in the locker room. Guys just want to be in the locker room. That speaks volumes about what they're building and the kind of people they're bringing in. The energy, they talk about the energy in the building. But one thing Deami Brown has said is, give me an example of the brotherhood. And he said, well, you see the Dante Fowler touchdown? It was those offensive guys were down there running down there celebrating with them too. So like guys are happy for one another. So when, um, how they handle things, like the way Mariota handles his role, you know, within the quarterback room leads to people wanting to play for him when he gets his chance. And you see that you see guys happy, really happy for one another. And I think that's where, that's where I think it makes a big difference. And, um, you know, when you get into tough spots, that's that you kind of fall back on that. And can that get you to what level can that get you to? I don't know, but it helps you max out. I think that's a big key. I think this team is absolutely maxing out and will do so for the season. It's funny because it was um, Mariota said that one of the things somebody asked him about, like, you know, the focus of this team, or whatever he said, it's tomorrow. And it's just meaning get back to work and focus on that day. And that, I think that's why I like this group because they do after the, after the Ravens game, after the Browns, you know, after whatever game, the, with their approaches, get back to work. And, and I told you, I loved how Quinn said that it was a lopsided game against Ravens because it kind of sends a message to the players like, yeah, you were close, but that, that showing wasn't good enough. You want to beat those teams. You've got to play better. And, you know, they're going to play better, way better teams than what they saw today. But if you keep that same approach, you will max out. And I think that's, that's what they're really, that's what you always want to do is to do that for sure. And, and then again, it helps to have number five, but if you don't, then you've got to fall back on something. And can you do that? And, um, 
you know, I, I just think that makes a big difference. And then going back to the game for a minute, that first drive of the second half also was really good. And just kind of putting that quote unquote nail in the coffin. It was, um, you watch the timing that Mariota had with Terry McLaurin on this. It was a second and 15, just a 19 yard throw to the left. But you see, you see Mariota throwing the ball before McLaurin is really getting to his break. That is, that's timing, right? That's field. That's a comfort level in, chemi- in chemistry and confidence. And Mitch Tischler, Mitch Tischler asked a good question in the press conference afterwards. Like the fact that they had Mariota quote unquote compete with Daniels for the job. Well, it gave him a chance at some first team reps in the spring and in the summer. So you got to work with a lot of some of these, a lot of these guys, all these guys in training camp. So you had a little bit of a knowledge built up of working with them. And I think it translated today for sure on that. Um, then, you know, he has the next class after the McClellan one is a slant to Ertz, hits him in stride, gets yards after the catch. You know, he was again, and Mariota was able to use his legs, which was, which was very good. And then, um, you know, um, he, he connects with Sinnott for a, for a touchdown and good for them. So, Good job by Mariota, and I don't want to overstate like just what it was because, and I don't want to just I don't want to also just blame it on Carolina being bad because you still have to go out there and execute. And we have seen too many times in the past where maybe the offense does it, but the defense does not, and that's where we go now. So Dante Fowler um, got this game going in the right way for Washington with the touchdown interception, the pick six. And he, he had a really good game. One had a sack um, on the interception. Just <laughs> there was, so there was some pressure and ball thrown ball was going to throw to the back behind the line of scrimmage, but <laughs> Dalton hits um, Fowler in stride. He jukes, he jukes Dalton and then just takes off from there. Just a nice athletic play by Fowler. And, and but that kind of got, that got them going in Um when you're playing a team like this, the one thing you need to do is completely make them one dimensional and, and just suck the life out of them right away. And I think that's what they did. Cause then Washington's offense went right down and scored 10 to nothing. And that essentially was the game, even though it sh- sh- didn't have to be, but you never really felt like Carolina was going to threaten them. And the Panthers offense had been moving the ball the last few weeks under Dalton. They were a top half offense. Now, it was the bottom of the top half. So they were like, I think it was 15th in scoring, 13th in yards, something like that with Dalton as quarterback. And it, but that's solid, right? It's not a great offense, but it's solid. What did we say all week? Well, you know, I, I, I thought this team would win. I thought they would win. I never doubted this. And I've come to the stadium many times with other teams where you doubt it, did not doubt it with this team. But what did we all say? Well, I think they're going to move the ball in this defense. Well, they did not. 180 total yards. They were shut out for the first three quarters. They were averaging like 3.7 yards per play deep into the second half. And that's like their average for the season with Dalton was 5.4. So uh, they took Chuba, um, Chuba Hubbard away, Chuba Hubbard away. And for sure. And he was a, a worry coming in a really good back, good vision, good cuts. They took him away and I've got to go back and rewatch the game to see exactly what they're doing. But um, they did, they, they did their job for sure. And they made, that's an offense that you could, it's it's not the Ravens offense. And if you could take it, things away right away, you take, they took Hubbard out of the game early in the first half, essentially. And so that's not a team that can win being one dimensional, but, you know, they took those, I mean, the, the, give the secondary a lot of credit. You didn't see any big plays. You didn't see missed assignments. I'm sure there were a couple, but you didn't, there would, they did not pay for them if there were. And then you even had a manual force picking off a pass because he was in the right spot in coverage, got to get some more snaps out there. That's good for him. As you heard Fred Smoot in the podcast the other day, if you didn't listen to it, go watch, go watch that talking about how Forbes needs to get his confidence back. Well, plays like that help do that. So a really good job by the defense Again, they did what they should, but making them one dimensional was a major, major key. So definitely teams in the past year that would not have had on, handled this game the same way. I just think it speaks to what they've created here, that if they had won 20 to seven, given what happened with Daniels, would you have been surprised? No, but you have to be at least excited that, man, they still went out and moved the ball at a really good clip without him. 
and they ran the ball really really well again and that's not surprising to me because what you saw in film was that defensive line getting moved back and they were missing a lot of key guy got missing a lot of guys so that always helps but and they did this too with the alumni in attendance for for the homecoming weekend and for the daryl green retirement ceremony attended that before the game cool cool just fun to see daryl and how much fun he was having and how much fun the fans were having watching this and i think that's also a key that this is this is a um they wanted to see that. And I think it was good for Daryl to be back in the fold here and, and just knowing what it meant to him. <clears throat> and I think what he likes is that he just, he used, he used football as a vehicle to make a difference in people's lives. And I think that's something that he's continued to do. And it's what I think he's most proud of for sure. I know that he is. And, you know, but he was a really good player here. And I think just having him back here, is a big deal for the franchise. And I think, you know, it's funny because this alumni group base has been back here a lot of times. They didn't see anything like this. And I think one of the things that Daryl talked to the crowd about is the new generation of fans and how stick behind them because it can be a lot of fun when things are going well as they are now. And you got number, you have Jaden Daniels to root for. And just like, this is now a franchise you can get behind because of all the changes and because of things going on. And, and so I think we're seeing that more and more each week. And, um, you know, um, again, I think there's something going on here and where there, I, I'll just say this, they'll max out. And I, Mariota said, one of the things he said during his presser is basically keep your heads down, get through this. He goes, but when we, when we, he said, when we pick our heads up in January, I think we'll be pleased with where we're at. And guys who have been around, who have been part of winning teams, know what it looks like, not just on the field, but in the locker room, in the meeting rooms, et cetera. Nick Allegretti, who played and won Super Bowls with the Chiefs, said that he's having a blast here. And, you know, you talk to Zach Ertz, like those guys know what it looks like. And they're seeing thing signs that like, you know, now there are still holes in this roster. We know that. And that could bite them in the end. It could, you know, when I say max out, max now could be 10 and seven. I don't know. Max now could be winning one playoff game and you're done. Who knows what that means? But I do think they'll get to wherever they should get to because of that. And then, um, you know, also you have Austin Cyber. <laughs> Look at him. He's only been here six games. Guess what? He's tied with Mark Mosley for the most points in franchise history after seven games. He's only been here for six. He's been uh, he's been pretty much automatic, and that's you know what a turn of events for this for this team, and how good of a pickup, how good of a pickup he's been, and it's been kind of quiet because now it's like okay, he made another one, ho hum. But that is a that's a that's just a you know a good thing for them to see. So, anyways, now what does this what does it all mean for next week? We'll talk about that throughout the rest of the week for about the Bears. And I think so much of it depends on what Jaden Daniels does, but that's going to be a, a terrific home game test for this team. The best team that they will have faced at home because they've beaten now the Giants on Browns and Panthers. So next week represents a much tougher team to play. Caleb Williams is playing well. That offense is moving the ball. So that's going to be a bigger, much bigger test next week, but they, they, they did what they should today. It blew out a bad team and they did it with their best player on offense, the best player not really having much of an impact. So anyways, folks, that's it for me. Again, I'll be back on Tuesday with a little game review and then Tuesday night, 730 Eastern time with Bram Weinstein, the voice of the commanders. Appreciate you tuning in. Enjoy it, folks. I'll talk to you next time.